The formidable Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit is popularly known as the Stealth Bomber, and with good reason. Its design, materials, configuration, wingspan, and equipment are all fine-tuned to mask its presence from radars and sensors, making the bomber practically invisible to enemy defenses. Developed during the height of the Cold War, the U.S. poured billions of dollars into developing a colossal bomber capable of flying to the very heart of Moscow and delivering almost 20 tons of conventional warheads or several nuclear cruise missiles. Its 6,000-mile range, high-altitude capabilities, and stealth systems make it the most survivable aircraft in the world, and as turmoil eroded in Serbia, Afghanistan, and Iraq, the B-2 bomber was the first to dive into danger, striking fear into any enemy agent in its surroundings. Still, developing a warplane so far removed from conventional aviation design represented one of the riskiest and most ambitious decisions in American military history. Most of the technology required for it simply didn't exist at the time, and every component, process, and manufacturing protocol had to be created from scratch. The U.S. risked it all in an extraordinary quest to build a bomber decades ahead of its time. Worst case scenario. The fervent drive to create a design as revolutionary as the Northrop Grumman B-2 spirit was fueled by one single idea, the need for a U.S. bomber capable of delivering nuclear warheads to the heart of Moscow should the apocalyptic conflict arise. If the worst-case scenario became a reality, the U.S. would need to have the most advanced bomber available to strike the Soviet Union's inner cities. By the dawn of 1970, the development of intercontinental ballistic missiles capable of reaching Russia was still in its early stages and the Soviet Union arguably possessed the most advanced anti-aircraft defense network in the world. American aviation experts determined that if war with the Soviet Union erupted, the B-52H and B-18 bombers would be highly ineffective at piercing the enemy's air defense systems. The first attempt the U.S. made to circumvent this issue was to design the fastest bombers possible. The idea was that supersonic planes, like the B-70 Valkyrie, would be able to outrun Soviet defenses by unleashing their Mach 3 speeds. Even if they were detected, the slower enemy planes and anti-aircraft missiles would do very little to counter them. Unfortunately, the supersonic solution would quickly exhaust its potential. Before a fully developed supersonic bomber could be deployed, the Soviets had already developed faster fighters and missiles capable of intercepting such warplanes. Low-altitude bombers were also considered a possible solution. By the early 1970s, most air defense systems in the world were built around radar technology, and it was well known that radar systems became significantly less reliable at detecting enemy warplanes the lower they were flying. Again, the Soviets had worked to neutralize the low-altitude vulnerability by deploying large numbers of handheld surface-to-air missiles, ideally suited to counteracting low-flying aircraft. Additionally, look-down shoot-down radars on MiG-31 and upgraded MiG-25 PD interceptors left low-altitude bombers in a highly vulnerable position. With few options left, the U.S. realized new technology was needed. Stealth Aviation Designing an aircraft to be practically undetectable by radar was not a new concept. During the final stages of World War II, Nazi Germany experimented with different materials and designs that would make warplanes less visible to Britain's early warning ground-based radar. Nevertheless, it wouldn't be until the late 1960s that the technology would be genuinely probed. Dennis Overholzer, a mathematician working for Lockheed Aircraft, adopted a mathematical prototype developed by Soviet scientist Peter Ufimtsev, which led to the creation of Echo-1. Echo-1 was a computer program that allowed the accurate prediction of an aircraft radar signature made with flat panels called facets. In 1975, engineers at Lockheed Skunk Works discovered that a plane made with faceted surfaces could result in a very low radar signature, as its surfaces would radiate almost all the radar energy away from the receiver. This research led to the world's first stealth aircraft, Lockheed's F-117 Nighthawk, which was still in development by the time the U.S. decided to further develop the technology to create a much more powerful and undetectable vehicle. A bomber. The development of the B-2 Spirit stemmed from the Advanced Technology Bomber, a major U.S. initiative to produce a new generation of bomber aircraft capable of bypassing Soviet defenses to deliver nuclear payloads to cities in the Soviet Union. As the pioneers of American stealth aviation, 
the Lockheed Corporation was the obvious choice to work on the ambitious endeavor. Still, the U.S. government issued a competitive requisition, which boasted two main proposals, one by Northrop and Boeing, and the other by Lockheed and Rockwell. Against all odds, and after years of preliminary design, Northrop and Boeing's proposal was selected, and they were officially tasked with developing the B-2 bomber in October of 1981. A staggering $23 billion were destined for research and development alone, with Northrop assembling a formidable team of MIT engineers to work on the project under the utmost secrecy. The goal was clear. The B-2 needed to take everything that made the F-117 so compelling and then revolutionize it exponentially to create an aircraft unlike anything the world had ever seen before. The Design the approved design for the B-2 stealth bomber was a radical divergence from anything that was being produced by any aviation manufacturer around the world. Thus, the masterminds behind the project had to design and build everything from assembly facilities, logistical assets, unique aircraft parts, and unprecedented manufacturing techniques. The bomber was envisioned as a flying wing aircraft, meaning that it had no fuselage or tail. This configuration gives the bomber remarkable low observable capabilities, in addition to high aerodynamic efficiency and the ability to carry a large payload. The aircraft's shape is the first factor that allows it to deceive radar technology. Still, it also makes it highly specialized, requiring pilots with unique talent and training to operate it adequately. The flying wing configuration also afflicts the bomber with its inherent instability. To compensate, the B-2 uses a complex quadruplex computer-controlled fly-by-wire flight control system that can robotically manipulate flight surfaces and settings without direct pilot input to maintain stability at all times. The dimensions and shape of the aircraft were meticulously tailored to provide the least possible radar cross-section. State-of-the-art computer models were used for the first time to ensure the radar signature emitted by the aircraft was as minuscule as possible. Still, the low radar cross-section meant that the size of the B-2 and the cockpit space was restrained compared to conventional bombers. While other bombers at the time, like the B-1B, had room for a crew of four, the B-2 was designed to be operated by only two airmen, which gave it significantly less margin for error, especially in long and exhausting sorties. The B-2 was also fitted with an ANAPQ-181 low-probability of intercept multi-radar system that detects threats with much more accuracy and time than any similar system. Most of the B-2's structures are made of a carbon graphite composite material that is stronger than steel, lighter than aluminum, and that absorbs a significant amount of radar energy, further increasing its radar invisibility. Standard engineering tolerances were rigorously increased in the B-2, allowing for almost no margin of error. Advances such as alternate high frequency and automated material application techniques were also included to enhance the aircraft's radar absorbent properties and reduce upkeep requirements. As for its armament, the B-2 has two internal bomb bays that can be arranged in either a rotating or rack configuration. The aircraft can carry 18,000 tons of ordnance, and having the payload inside it remarkably amplifies the bomber's stealth capabilities. In addition, the B-2 was built with the option to carry several nuclear and thermonuclear cruise missiles inside its bomb bays. Top Secret During its development, the B-2 was labeled as a black project, which meant that every single aspect of its production was top secret, and everyone who worked on it had to comply with complete secrecy. Entire industrial wards were bought and rebuilt to accommodate the development process, and the laborers in these plants had to assume fake identities while claiming to work on entirely unrelated projects. In 1984, a Northrop employee, Thomas Kavanaugh, was apprehended for attempting to sell classified information to the Soviet Union. Kavanaugh was ultimately sentenced to life in prison and released on parole in 2001. After spending $23 billion in research and development, each B-2 bomber was set to cost $2.3 billion, making it the most expensive aircraft in history. However, in 1992, as the Soviet Union collapsed, the U.S. realized it no longer needed a bomber specialized in striking a target that was no longer there, especially such a costly one. Thus, they reduced the order of 132 units to 75. The fall of the Soviets also meant that the B-2 no longer needed to fulfill the role of a nuclear-capable bomber, and adjustments were made to modify the bombers in the conventional ordnance aircraft. Combat Operation 
Despite much of its essence being deemed useless in a post-Cold War world, the B-2 would showcase formidable performance as a conventional bomber, so much so that the aviation marvel has often been considered too advanced for the missions it has been assigned to. After 20 years of service, an assessment published by the U.S. Air Force showed that two B-2s armed with precision weaponry could do the role of 75 conventional aircraft. The B-2's combat debut was in 1999 during the Kosovo War. The groundbreaking bomber was responsible for destroying 33% of the selected Serbian targets during the initial phase. Despite accounting for only 50 out of a total of 34,000 NATO sorties, the B-2s dropped over 10% of all bombs during the conflict. The B-2 also saw extensive service during the conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq in the early 2000s. The bomber's unique equipment and unparalleled performance allowed it to easily venture deep into enemy territory, obliterate enemy bases, and then exit the battlefront without ever being detected. In addition, as it was designed to deceive the world's second greatest technological superpower, it could easily infiltrate territories controlled by insurgent groups in the Middle East. More recently, the B-2 has been used in the fight against ISIS, striking targets in Libya in 2017 and 2018. In total, the B-2s dropped 108 500-pound precision-guided joint direct attack munitions reaching some of the most remote enemy holdouts in the region. Throughout its career, the B-2 has always deployed from its base in Missouri, achieving missions up to 60 hours long. With almost $50 billion spent on the B-2 program by 2004, and up to $135,000 of maintenance needed per flight hour, the aircraft is not only the most expensive warplane in the world, but it is also the most expensive to maintain and deploy. Still, U.S. authorities are confident that the cost was worth it to guarantee the U.S.'s technological and military advantage on the world stage. Thank you for watching my video. Do you think the significant investment in the B-2 spirit was worth it? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. And for more exciting aviation content, make sure to subscribe to Dark Skies. You can also check out our other Dark Documentaries channels, where you'll find more compelling history-inspired content. Stay tuned.